Swayam Prabha Digital India Educated India Hello everyone, welcome back to online NPTEL course on structure, form and architecture, the synergy. Today we are at lecture number 16 and in this we will talk about the structural typology. So, in the last lecture uh, we have discussed about different uh, material and their you know pros and cons and also we discussed about different property. So, looking at their property and then advantage disadvantages. So, time to time we develop different structural arrangement. So, in earlier lecture we have discussed about like post column, post slab, wall slab. So, this kind of different structural arrangement that being in practice and we create the overall structure. So, in this it will be another interesting uh, lecture where uh, we just uh, you know discussed about different type of structures and then this lecture will be basically a summary or maybe a you know what we can say that a very brief uh, introduction to different type of uh, structural system and slowly we will pick up one by one and we will discuss on that and their application. So, let us start this particular uh, lecture. So, if you uh, um, like try to uh, make structural category. So, it is very tough, we cannot really have a single category of a structure because you know uh, when we discussed about the structural form that time also we uh, said that structural form is something like uh, not really giving uh, the clear picture, it is better the structural system because a building may have more than one such structural system. So, one may be predominant, but the other is also important as well. So, looking at that position, looking at uh, the material used. So, uh, in this particular lecture, we try to divide it in five categories. So, what are those categories? The first one is a solid type structure. Okay. The second one is surface. So, then we talk about something having uh, lower thickness and then the skeletal is basically uh, similar to the skeleton. So, the given the backbone and then uh, the remaining part of you know overall building is just to uh, protect the environment or making privacy and etcetera like the frame structure and all. Then also there is a category called membrane structure where we normally uh, will be talking about the you know taint, the cable, some pneumatic structure, we will discuss on that. And the skeleton it is the framework and the truss, different kind of truss, we will also discuss uh, each of them uh, in a separate lecture to know more about that, like how they really uh, helping us like how they deal with the applied load, where the compression will develop, where the tension will develop, how it will act against the, the bending uh, and the shear. So, we will also discuss on that, but for this timing we just try to figure it out. So, when we talk about the solidness, so we just can collect it with the wall, then the arch and the vault and uh, then you have your you know what we call the dam. Uh, and then uh, when we talk about the tension uh, acid structure, so it is hybrid. So, not coming into the single category, it may be uh, something like which is a hybrid of multiple such structural systems. So, we use the membrane, we use the uh, like some skeleton and then we just make a fusion of that. So, that is basically uh, what we can say the classification into the category. So, in this uh, before we really go, so solidity, so it may be what we uh, just told uh, like this is the wall, the wall structure then you can support it with some buttress in you know uh, like uh, you know earlier in history we have used it. When you talk about uh, like the surface, so we are talking about different you know 
plates or the slab or you know the connection between your column post slab kind of combination. So, this is another typology when you talk about the membrane. So, basically we are talking about the different you know uh, membrane structure which is anchored somewhere and may be supported with the mast. So, this is in this category and then if you uh, go for uh, like the skeleton structure. So, it is basically the frame that we make the composition of uh, your uh, horizontal and vertical components. So, let us uh, discuss with some examples. So, it will be clear to us. So, in this wall are the simplest uh, you know form uh, and basically it is uh, the compressive structure and the way they will transmit the load is basically you know uh, towards the gravity. So, whenever we create any building and also finally, whatever load imposed on it will transmit to the foundation it has it may be the stiff foundation for the load bearing or the isolated if it is something made of the you know uh, other type of uh, foundation. So, it transmit the load uh, vertically downwards. The construction is normally the machinery or in concrete. So, when we talk about the brick uh, wall or the stone wall, so it is related to the machinery. So, they put brick or blocks on the mortar bed and they, they form this particular structure and can also act as a retaining structure if we properly ribbed it with the reinforcement. So, nearly where we want that retaining structure may be at the bank of the river or may be somewhere in the hilly region where to protect the landslide. So, wherever we require the similar kind of retaining wall can also be used. The shear wall can also be used in this category which basically is showing a mass and a solid profile, sectional profile of a structure and hence it is coming under this solid category. So, here you can see a example random example I have taken. So, it is mostly the wall the you know the nice masonry work that create all these you know openings and all. So, overall aesthetically it is looking very pleasing as well as it is also solving the purpose of the structure. Come to the arch fault and dam again arch uh, is uh, again a uh, very useful uh, like what we can say the compressive structure where due to this curvature it transfer the load. So, load is very uh, well transferred and because of the symmetricity symmetry of this arch uh, it will transfer the load to the you know the supporting column and then it transmit the load. So, as true with the uh, vault where uh, we can also uh, get this kind of you know compression mainly in this category. And same is true for the dam where it is being built very huge and uh, it may make of something like concrete uh, the retaining wall or maybe sometimes in earlier it is just uh, like a masonry. So, it is under uh, the profile of the solid structure as a typology. Now, come to the surface one in this basically it is not that much solid. So, what grid says that it is a series of members arranged at right angles to you know one to each other to form the grid. Okay. So, it is arrangement, but depending on the arrangement we may have a regular or rectangular grid like this or maybe we have something which is skewed and sometimes in 45. So, that may be a diagonal grid. So, basically whenever we design a building, so we design the beams layout uh, support to the column in different way out. So, we make the grid and this grid you know this particular frame structure will uh, really help us to make multi story. So, in this, this grid will decide uh, about the span and also it decide the direction how load will be transferred. So, the shear uh, it shear the loads according to the position and direction of the members which are close to it which are away from it. So, if I take uh, say one square uh, slab uh, in a grid. So, basically if load is imposed here. So, how it will be distributed is basically distributed like this. So, it will transfer the load to the beam and it is very you know 
uh, very systematic manner if the material is very homogeneous and all the columns designed to support it are equal in size. So, it will also be distributed very uniformly provided that it is uniformly distributed load, but whenever it is point load it will self adjust to its position. So, it is also can be used for the large, large span where this grid can be formed and then also for the height. So, here you can see one of that like how grid being used in this structure. Come to the second example or under the surface where it is basically showing about uh, what we discussed earlier also that is your uh, post slab connection. So, you can see that there is no such beam or something just you the slab is resting on the post or column. So, plates or flat slab are generally horizontal element as because we call it slab and with the length and breadth. So, this is we just define it with certain area and it is large in comparison to the thickness. So, this is how you can define it. So, whenever you uh, you know think about say 10 meet say 5 meter by 5 meter grid. So, thickness is compared to that is 150 mm ok. So, where it is 5000 by 5000. So, it is like that even it can be higher based on the requirement and the material used. They are designed to span in two direction at right angles and may be flat. So, sometimes you know it is uh, how you go for it like it may be something uh, we call we will come that like the one way slab or two way slab and depending on how we design this particular thing like length is too big or maybe it is having equal shear all the side like square is form and then uh, stiffening strip and you know uh, the thickening at the supporting column points that will also determine the characteristics of this plate. Slab can be designed around lines equal stress, but form work is elaborate and thus expensive. So, we can really go for this kind of grid, but basically that needs the proper calculation that computation to be done and then also we have to uh, decide about the form work or the supporting work during the construction when the concrete and other thing is in is initial setting in the semi liquid form then we have to take care of this. Come to the other surface category when again the thickness of uh, you know that particular form is so negligible uh, compared to uh, the span it can cover. So, seal uh, are the surface structure which are curved in one or two direction. So, uh, like it may be of say something we just bent a piece of paper in one direction like this ok. Uh, if I draw it correctly, so something like this. So, we just bend it give a form of a vault. So, that is one or it may be uh, like two directional where we think about you know uh, in this case that one curve is in this side the other one is this side. So, uh, like we play with the parabolic hyperbolic or uh, hyperbolic paraboloid form that um, you know if you find uh, the work of Felix Candela we find that kind of use of the curvature. So, in that uh, this curvature will help us uh, to also you know resist the load uh, applied on that and also it can increase uh, the huge span uh, and also like uh, due to the thin uh, you know this particular cell can help us to design. So, you can also think of a dome where it can develop it. So, in this case uh, like uh, the hyperbolic paraboloid shell being used in many buildings uh, that uh, we can see the structural forces in shell are largely pure tension and compression. So, basically in this case what we have that a surface where uh, this will be in compression this portion and then at the bottom one it will develop tension. So, it is to be understood like if you take uh, a particular you know such kind of uh, domical shape and you just put pressure on that or you take uh, one eggs. When we discussed about the sail structure I will uh, really show you some of the experiment. Uh, at a small scale that uh, how we understand where tension and compression will 
take place. So, this is another typology under the surface. Now, in this case uh, this is surface where it is the uh, stress skin. So, what exactly it is uh, basically not a flat one, but it is related to uh, something where we already uh, uh, have seen like the folded plate. So, already uh, it is a combination of thin plates like how you add uh, the ribs or increase the steepness of that material. So, it may be some corrugated uh, you know uh, metal pipe or it may be something where it is a membrane kind of structure. So, ribs continue uh, contribute steepness and also uh, like what we can get out of it the you know thin and flexible sheet that can also you know be you know acting better uh, due to uh, the applied load. So, depending on uh, the material availability and uh, the purpose will pick up this kind of stress skin. So, here what says the materials used for stress skin construction can be metal timber or GRF. So, uh, basically in this case like wherever we can really uh, do this experiment, but at the same time we can also use the uh, you know concrete in this case, but properly it should be ripped or uh, reinforced in this case. So, it is again from the surface example. Now, come to the skeleton. So, this is a very uh, useful um, you know component under that that is the truss. So, truss is basically assembly of structural members. Okay. So, they are joined together and mostly they are joined together with a pin joint okay, and this is to be formed in a triangulation form. Because uh, to start with suppose we have a portal like this where they are fixed. So, on applied load what happened that it will try to you know get a deformation. The moment we put a diagonal, okay, so automatically this due to this triangulation, so it will uh, be more uh, you know it will develop more resistance again applied load and um, this particular arrangement the bracing we call. Okay, help uh, this structure to get you know better stability. Trusses can be two dimensional like normally this kind of two dimensional truss being used for the factory or some old historic building and it may be three dimensional and then we call it uh, prismatic and when it is two dimensional we call it planar. So, here this is the example of planar truss and here it is true uh, two dimensional uh, you know or prismatic. So, here you can see this uh, basically you know this kind of structure where uh, the cross section if you see that will give a form of a prism. So, from that it is uh, derived as prismatic. So, for any cultural event some concert um, you know you must have seen this kind of arrangement where with the minimal area. Uh, this is uh, so stable. So, uh, this is one. So, prismatic or space truss uh, linked together. So, uh, when we use this 3D truss it will give a form of space frame. So, space frame is another important uh, you know structural typology being used to have a light uh, roof uh, especially for a gathering or maybe station or an airport. Now, in this case uh, like this is uh, one example of the space frame you see like how they are joined to each other. The load transfer of this space frame how the transfer is complicated to be designed uh, very accurately and you know then uh, you have to apply it and there are few supports. So, that you can see that the how much span and the height it can cover. So, space frames are three dimensional lattice structure linked pyramid or tetrahedra. So, basically uh, tetrahedra is where all, all these you know vertex they are equidistant to each other so, that is one important and it is giving a very good stability instead of a pyramid of different height and all. Now, load span the each condition determine the form and depth. So, definitely uh, like um, how you really uh, try to fix it up, 
how you transfer the load based on that this will be designed. So, this is another skeleton uh, structure typology that being used for the building. Now, come to the framework. So, here again uh, it is uh, a composed of materials which assembled in two or three directions. So, uh, we just try to make a box. So, it may be something like uh, we just connect this part and then this part or maybe they are connected to give more rigidity, more uh, stability with this bracing. So, steepness of a frame depends on the steepness of the element that we used. So, how you use this particular material and like this member or this element to that system that will determine the steepness. The pin joint frames are unstable under load and require the addition of further element to give steepness like diagonal bracing. So, what we discussed like we can have a frame like this just simple frame and they are pin joint. So, they will definitely deform and then if we add this, so it will be stable. If you go for a cross bracing, so it will be more stable to that. For high rise buildings, its lateral force is concerned due to the wind and again uh, due to the seismic act activity, the oscillation. So, this lateral movement of the structure, um, uh, you know, is very important for high rise, but for specially considering the wind. Uh, blow at higher uh, uh, you know altitude. So, this kind of bracing uh, to the framework. So, definitely help us to come up with better solution to resist our building against that kind of applied load. Now, come to the membrane. This is a type where it is uh, already being discussed and this example from the Arizona State University campus being so repeated. So, nice construction with uh, you know some kind of uh, you know cloth like material. So, it is fully uh, given the um, tension. So, with this you know tensile cable and this you know the mast that used is act only act as the compressive members. So, in membrane structure all the primary forces are arranged to be in tension uh, through the cable and uh, the form cables and or a net and coated fabric with tension edge cable. And whereas, the load from membrane can be taken to the ground via compression mast. So, this is the compression mast. So, they have used in several points and others all members all this coated fabric is basically uh, in tension. Now, uh, compared to that the other category in the membrane structure that is the pneumatic structure where like air uh, or some kind of liquid being pooped. So, for pneumatic it is most commonly the air supported membranes and they do not really need any other support or any form. So, they will be created. So, we put the air and many of us we have seen such kind of pneumatic structure especially in a you know fairground or something for the kids that we find a Mickey Mouse or something student are jumping on top of it. So, it is basically a cloth or such fabric and we just uh, inject air into it and give the tentative form. So, this is another uh, kind of membrane where you know the thickness of the material is nothing, but to create the form the huge space is very vital for us. Uh, there are some uh, you know disadvantage of this about the height restriction and the, in the reaction against other forces, but definitely it is uh, one of uh, the very you know portable, uh, portable structure that we can develop. Now, come to the hybrid structure. So, in this uh, the hybrid structure uh, basically where the number of structural types do not fit in the category that membrane or the gree uh, like we said solid or the skeletal. So, that is coming into the hybrid category. It is uh, a fact that although primary type may be solid or skeletal, but secondary elements of a different type may part of the structure. So, we cannot really distinguish or put a structure in a single category. So, same example can be given in multiple category, but uh, looking at the predominance of a structural system of all structural systems being used in this uh, building. Uh, so, we put in the category, but in hybrid 
uh, there are more than one is uh, basically the dominance. So, uh, here it says the hybrid where there is a combination of two types of near equal dominance. So, if you see this structure that here this particular you know glass space frame being used and as well as this steel you know framework being used. So, both are complementing each other. So, here it is coming under the hybrid category. So, in that uh, there are probable you know compositions like uh, what we can call the tension acid structures. So, uh, this is basically it may be at steel or tensile members. So, only steel being used as like post uh, beam and then the cables being used to add some uh, membrane kind of structure to it. Then you may have the structural glass and steel as a combination. Here you can see what uh, exactly uh, like it is being steel being used uh, with other. So, then uh, in this also the machinery and steel can also go together. Okay, uh, so, this is something like where you have seen like uh, in earlier phase that we make the machinery with the brick and all. Uh, we do not really uh, cast the slab uh, with the concrete or something. We just use some I section. So, on top of the wall uh, of a building uh, of the machinery, we the put this I section in layer. So, basically if I draw the plan, so, so many I sections are running parallelly and on top of it we put the tiles and that put some you know lime concrete to make uh, something like what we also can call um, reinforced brick concrete or something uh, or, or the other. So, it may be something like where we use the timber and steel together. So, in particular lecture we have discussed about uh, like how we make uh, the you know timber as a structural material and we make the whole building uh, with the you know timber material, the beam, column, the bracing and rest of the things that filled up by the masonry. So, it is again a combined structure. So, even in the load bearing case, so we put both together. So, this is something where like we go for uh, making it a very hybrid structure. So, this particular thing is under hybrid. Now, uh, to have a quick recap uh, in this uh, portion like let us just uh, try to understand uh, this predominancy of this structure. So, if you use uh, this particular example TW terminal building. So, it is coming under um, I just give you some uh, you know few seconds to think on it and then let us just uh, match whether we are on the same track or not. So, take uh, some 5 seconds uh, and just quickly uh, just figure it out. Okay. So, uh, I think all of you can give right answer to that. So, it is basically uh, compared to the it is coming under the you know shale structure thin shale structure and it under the category it will come in the category of surface. So, surface and shale this is uh, again surface right. So, it is again surface, but in this case it is basically the folded plate and this is something uh, looking very you know attractive. So, it is based on the year. So, it is pneumatic. So, it is pneumatic structure and uh, it the category is your membrane right. So, okay. so, this task is done I think all of you have answered in a similar fashion. So, let us take another set. So, in this case what we see uh, like uh, what exactly it is? Yes, it is basically the space frame right. So, space frame is basically coming under uh, your skeletal structure fine very fine. Again, this is something which is made of some concrete reinforce and creating the dome. So, again it is coming under um, uh, shale structure okay. and then also it referred to surface because of the thickness of that uh, particular you know uh, which uh, thickness is very less compared to the span it can cover. 
Uh, now, here it is something like can you recognize this particular picture? I have used a couple of times this earlier. So, this is uh, the Olympic Stadium from Munich and we discussed on the ground of making a light structure. So, it is again if you see that okay, there is post and then the cable and then it is basically the membrane that are looking uh, you know this is much prominent. So, it is again uh, a membrane structure okay, where it is basically given tension and then all this load transfer to the ground through this uh, compressive mast. Okay. So, it is compressive mast. So, we know this thing. So, now your task is to really find some buildings that you see in uh, your day to day life or maybe you have come across through different uh, you know platform in a book or maybe in uh, some website. So, you just try to figure out and just put them in the category. So, make a exhaustive list and um, share with me so that we will discuss on that in uh, the process. So, um, this is what that we discussed about this, but again uh, the uh, you know summary what we can say that though we have the category of solid, then you have this you know surface, then you have this membrane, then you have skeleton, uh, then after that you also discussed what we like have this is basically the hybrid. Okay. So, these are some general form, but you know we cannot really give a single name to a building because it may consist of multiple structural system. So, but predominance looking at the predominance which is coming up in front of you we will go for that. So, uh, your task is to find or give uh, put that building that you search for or you have already uh, noticed uh, in different platform to club into together. So, again I really thank you uh, all to take part in this course and uh, now we will be uh, you know waiting for the further discussion of each of individual uh, structural uh, mem like uh, components on that and before that you can really go through the books that I have referred which are very useful to get more uh, examples and also help to you know develop the idea on the discussion that we have. So, next we will discuss with compressive structure and till then um, again I uh, would like to thank you bye bye.